Welcome to Moscow, Russia. <laughs> Yo, is that Davy Crockett? The Canadian version? Was Davy Crockett Canadian or American? I don't know. But this is, I don't have a raccoon tail. What I'm really saying is, yes, you're right. You're seeing it right. I am outside in uh, many minus degree weathers, but today it's actually beautiful here. It's bluebird, sunny. Uh, the snow banks are 12 feet high still, but I'm finally coming back to tell you about the last two months. It's been crazy. Uh, that's a lot of snow on a roof. And uh, yeah, basically I got a lot of shit to catch you guys up on. Um, so many things to talk about and discuss. It'll all make sense here in a minute. Uh, once we concoct a buffalo chicken dip, which we're gonna have with some chips. And we're gonna have a long conversation about what happened over the last two months. Basically life handed it to me. So I had to handle it and give it back to life. Okay, many things, many contrived convoluted shitty covids and was sick for a long time and then christmas and the new years and i started a little snow blowing business just to make some extra money and then working with my buddy and all these things and i kind of broke some ribs and i was down and out for the count for a while and then depression and just a lot of stuff um and then obviously trying to get my computer fixed which i've finally worked that all out with but you know lots of we'll talk about it as we eat this buffalo <laughs> chicken dip uh, I figured I, can, I would make something that's like we can I can just snack upon and have a, a long chat with you guys about. Um, so this will be like a podcast length type shit, probably like a 45 minute hour video would be my guess. Uh, but anyways, I'm just basking in a little bit of sunlight, trying to get those rays because summer or summer uh, winter here is so depressing. But we'll talk about that too in this video. Anyways, let's uh, get to making this buffalo chicken dip. I'll show you how to throw it together. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right. So just before we get into this video, this is just for a cautionary tale. I'm going to tell you guys how I broke my laptop to begin with. It's screwed now. It's just completely dead. But I, well, not dead. The screen's completely dead, but it's still, I'm able to charge my phone off. And that's what I'm doing right now. I cleaned it all up. Hopefully I can maybe fix it in the future, sell it, something, I don't know. But either way, I just charged my phone off it. But here's my, this is hilarious, basically a uh, bunch of adhesive from the years of use with that. But right here, okay, here is the screen crack in question which started the whole fiasco. Basically, the size of this flap, the screen used to glitch right out. Also, this is my paranoia piece right for the camera we all know about paranoia pieces but anyways so that used to glitch out but everything else worked and then when i posted that thing recently over here went glitchy and i had a little bit of screen left and then one day it just all went black so anyways but this is a cautionary tale when i would edit right i would have my like dongle here and i would put in my memory card to pull footage to, to edit so I would pull my files, right, from the dongle from this, take out the dongle, and so as not to lose this, just to keep track of it, and don't do this, I used to tuck this right in by the fan right here, right? And so one night I was editing, wasn't paying attention, went to go to bed, went to go to sleep, and then I closed the lid of my laptop and all I heard was, so that I heard, and that's how that happened, and then, everything continued to screw up screw up in the future more i was praying it would never happen and then it all happened so anyways just a cautionary tale don't tuck shit in that's small and slender into by where your fan is by where you close the lid on your laptop i almost just dropped it but it doesn't really matter but hopefully i can get the screen fixed and maybe sell it i don't know i have no idea so don't tuck shit in there okay just a cautionary tale all right, y'all, we in from outside. Buffalo chicken dip. Real chicken, maybe some other tenders that are crispy that I had to use up. We've got scallions. We have celery, cheese types, many, but cream cheese being the base. Frank's Red Hot, some Hidden Valley Ranch, and then these corn rounds, my favorite type of chip because of structural integrity, and I just love the corn rounds. They're very good. So simple dish. We'll chuck her together, but we got to do a couple things to make it nice make it right and then uh we'll have a chat like a long like a really long chat and say thank you to everybody who helped me and uh just tell you what's been going on
So first things first, gotta cook some chicken. You guys know me, a little canola oil in the pan. Flame on high. Woo wee, flambe. Almost got flambe my first day back. Shit, okay. Chicken in, doesn't matter if it's really piping hot yet, it'll cook down and that's all good. Some people use shredded chicken for this. I'm using whole shit. Couple pinches of salt, gotta salt your chicken, right? All right, while this chicken is sizzling away, we're gonna cook our other chicken, which is breaded chicken. The most standardized, basic like childhood strips that you get at a cafe for lunch in the cafeteria. Jane's pub style, they're kind of whatever, but you know, air fryer, 400, maybe eight to 10 minutes, and those should be good. All right, these should have some nice browning on one side. We give them a flip. There we go, we got some color. Color is where flavor's at, we know this by now. But we got some nice color. It also makes cleaning pans harder, but oh well, we don't, we don't stress that. We'd rather have a hard pan to clean and more flavor, you know? All right, so chicken is good. We're gonna pop that off. Go ahead and let that cool down off to the side to the, for a bit. We're gonna have to chop that up to add into the dip. In the meantime, how about a little deglaze? A little vinegar water. A little deglaze to clean that pan. All right, time to make this dip base. Just gonna put a little water in here. All right, time to make the base for this. A little bit of water, cream cheese. Just put a little water here because otherwise the cream cheese is gonna start to burn and stick to the pan. At which point we need to have ranch, cup of ranch, and our Frank's buffalo sauce, equal parts. And we just slowly melt this guy down. All right, slowly but surely we got this base coming together. I just added a little bit of hot water to it. You gotta keep it moving otherwise it's gonna burn to the pan. So we keep this moving, an eye on it, as it starts to melt out and come together. All right, first things first, spring onion, going in for in the dip and on the dip. We will do some in the dip, and then we'll have some for a finishing move on top of the dip to make it very beautiful and pretty. Anything buffalo wouldn't be buffalo without some celery. So this is gonna be a finishing move on top of the dip. Nice and fresh and crunchy finisher on top. But I'm gonna to rip some strips and just have some nice, fine, minced celery. Oh, we got eight beeps, baby. Eight or nine beeps, Iceman. Where you been, bro? He's been around. But yeah, this will be a finishing move, a, a garnish on top to, uh, to mix in. All right, time to transfer this dip into its dipping pad, its home where it's gonna live. And we're gonna do some serious dunking with our tortilla rounds. All right, so put that here in the pie crust, clear pie crust dealio. We're gonna go on top with more cheese, more shredded. And we'll bake this off. And while that's baking off, we have our other chicken to chunk up, our crispy chicken, of course, because we're doing two types of chicken in this buffalo. And I'm just gonna do random little chops on the bias and make them very, very sprinkleable, bite size for the tippy top of the dip. Tip of the dip. Just the tip of the dip. Many ways to pivot. There's many ways to skin a chicken finger, apparently. <laughs> but there you go. Nice little chunky bite size. Back into their housing unit for now. Okay, told you a little bit of a fib. I'm actually going to, before I bake this off, I'm gonna put these crispy chicken bits atop this and have them sort of crisp up and bake into the cheese in the oven as well while it gets kind of hot again, melty, schmelty, all the LTs that there are. And uh, yeah, you know, just so it sinks in and becomes part of the dish. 
Alright, just before we pull this dip, we gotta have a little transparent see-through opaque, opaque opacity. <laughs> All the words and really loud sounds of the dippables, the chips. My favorite. I love these guys so much. You know what I mean? That's gonna... That little taco-shaped corn chip, that's gonna nestle a nice little dunkaroo in there. These are, once again... <laughs> Movie chips, hockey arena chips, corner store chips with that cheesy sauce. You know the ones. Okay, we're pulling the baked dip. Look at the edges right here. Look at that, bubble. Michael Buble. <laughs> Michael Buble playing in the edges of this dip. See, that's Michael. I let her settle a bit and now the final accoutrement, that cold green onion and that cold celery to finish a top but that isn't all you know this is just a nice little green decorative obviously there's going to be some flavor imparted as well but uh, that's not all and you want to know why he's a he's a saucy guy right he stopped by Popeyes and he got some black and ranch and he put it in the squeeze bottle for a final finesse. A little black and ranch. Why not, right? Might as well. Oh, we're, we're clogging. There we go. And then the final drizz of a sweet heat. Let's see if we can get it to come out the package in a decent drizz. There it is. There it is, the decent drizz. All right. Closer, bring the light in closer. There it is. The final multi chicken buffalo dip with many a sauce, many a cheese, many a things, and that cold, crispy celery. This, all right, let's get into this and have a uh, big old conversation. <laughs> Holy shit, it's been a minute. Do I forget how? I feel like it's right like it, it's like riding a bike. It's like <laughs> riding a bike. That's what it feels like. Anyways, what's up? Oh man, I haven't seen myself in the side screen in a long ass time. Two and a bit months. Jeez, so much to say, so much to talk about. I'm gonna try to keep this in chronological order, chronological time. You guys know that I'm like storyteller memory time stream of consciousness flow kind of guy i don't love to do massive edits i feel as if maybe some edits are going to be required in this video but uh wow just so much to unpack and like i said i will try to keep it as chronological as, as i can also shout out chronos chronos is the god of time if you didn't know that chrono is the god of time mythologically speaking which is why when you say chronological order, meaning chronos, meaning timeline, meaning start to finish, origin point, genesis, into infinity. But we all have finitude. Anyways, getting too deep. Uh, so I'll pull I'll, I'll pull the depth back here for a minute and uh, and pour up. Really, uh, before we do anything more, we must. Papa, we have a papa. <laughs> In many, many months and like, listen guys, there's so many reasons for such. Uh, after I get to the pour, I'm gonna get to the most important part of this and that's the thank yous to everybody who donated to the GoFund. I'm so sorry it's taken this long. Uh, the guilt, the shame, the, the everything, but life really just put me in a corner and I had to dig my way out and um, yeah, lots to talk about. So anyways, Papa, we have our sledder from the past and uh, icebergs accumulating atop and we have a uh, a mega in canuck land a mega canet or a king can if you will of dp i love a nice king can of dp so let's take it back to the classics take it back to my sister's basement and do a deep dr p pour up right a moment of sigh for the fizz. It's like a nursery bedtime story from your grandma, right? For your taste buds. 
All right. Okay, so a first sip of a, of a full sugi. We haven't had a full sugi in. Well, I've had some full sugars here and there, but we together on this platform haven't had a full sugar in many, 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 many moons. Many, many moons. All right, cheers. Squinties. It is like riding a bike. I know how to be me. I've always known how to be me. That's part of my problem lately with the depression. The depression creeps in sometimes when being you doesn't pay the bills. And that's fine. That's, that's, that's the world and that's life. We ain't making excuses. We're just talking about sadness relative to that at times. But anyways, cheers. Delicious treats. And uh, let's get into thank yous and then get into a dip. So first things first, massive thank you. I think it was 25, 30 people, something like that. Came into the GoFund, banged it out super quick came to the rescue for a guy like i said i put up the thing i wasn't raised to ask for handouts that's why i put it at a g one thousand dollars i i know like, i don't mean to scoff at a thousand thousands amazing but i said you get me halfway i'll get myself halfway in canada the laptop i needed to do what i need to do to make these videos is like 17.99 then after tax it's about two grand um and i said i'd raise the rest which i did through side hustles, which we'll talk about, uh, as this video unfolds. Um, but yes, huge thank you to those people who came through super quick. I'm so sorry. It took this long to get back, but, uh, if you sit and listen to the remainder of this video, you'll understand what it was and where I'm at and how things are. So, um, I was emotional at the time, obviously when all the, the, the donations came through so fast. Also, I didn't know the thousand dollar. I thought that was the limit more came through gofundme allows more donations than the cap so really what came through was about 1235 and then uh gofund took their portion which was like pretty low it was like 100 bucks so i was left left with 1135 i put a thousand away to try to figure out what i'm going to do i was either going to fix the screen on my laptop or get a new one. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I went through all those motions in the last two months and we'll unpack that here. With the other 135, I pitched in a couple bucks uh, myself just to, to get this, and this is for future videos. I joined <laughs> the Yeti Club. So those who donated beyond the thousand, I picked this up for, I think it was something like a hundred and I think it was like 170 something like that so i took a little bit of the funds for for the asmr heads i know not everybody loves asmr I, I get it but i started my channel with that and i know there's people out there who have fiend for my asmr still and i i tested this and y'all it's true like it is very very legit it sounds great the videos i'm going to be able to make asmr wise with this is going to be knock your socks off put you to sleep all the tingies all the relaxation all the things so i'm gonna implement this here and there uh, i'm just trying to figure out how to situate it because i don't love making videos with like this you know penis shaped phallic right in my mouth but it does have to be in the mouth or near the mouth to make the good sounds. I tried to hang it above. It sucks when you hang it above. So I'm just trying to situate it because this is a cramped space, right? Um, and yeah, so we'll figure that out. So while we're talking about the mouth, let's uh, have a, a a try, a treat of this, this dip. I've never made this dip before. I am just talking a lot because I have a lot to cover, but also I know this is gonna be hot as shit is the other thing too. I'm also gonna put this can back here just to hopefully just don't mind me trying to optimize thumbnails. So I hope to get a, a stretchy cheese. Uh oh, structural integrity, not holding up at all. Uh oh, maybe we need a curved. Let's, let's do a curved. And then we do a, ay ay ay. Oh, it's so crackly. It's so, oh, oh wow. This dip is much too heavy much too heavy 
All right, we're not going to get good at something at all. All right. It's like riding a bike. It's like riding a bike. Okay. I know there's so many viewers out there like, just shut up and eat. But it's like, bruh, you haven't been with me for years. It's like, you haven't been with me for years. And you don't know the depth and the truth of, of me and my community. And I, I love my community. Big shouts. Sorry to leave you hanging, but it'll all make sense soon. We bite this, and then we get into everything. Jeez. Come on now. Get real. Wow. What a dip. Oh, it's so heavy though. I need almost like a be honest with you. Like a toasted pita. It's very, um, like spinach dip esque. That's why I was so worried about when I was putting the water in. I wanted to make it as thin, not as thin as possible, but I knew it would congeal and get heavy, especially because there's chicken chunks and all the rest. So, logistics right dip logistics but you know what's up uh i'll give a quick flavor profile breakdown here and then we'll talk okay the cream cheese and the buffalo coming through hard very cheesy the chicken's a little lost. It's in there for substance. It's substantial. The sauce is definitely helping to come through. And then, yeah, that little additive of the fresh, cold celery definitely holds weight, has bearing in the flavor profile. All right, let's get into it. So... I've been gone about just over two months, I would say, roughly. Now, prior to that, uploading like a son of a bee, right? So I was uploading like, I think, 22 to 24 videos a month, possibly more, right? So I'm trying to be consistent as shit in the algorithm so that, you know, a the more uploads, the more you can make some, some money because I need to make money because this is a business now, let's not lie. Still a love, a passion, uh, all that. It's a business though. Turn into a business. Is what it is. But banging out uploads, uploads, uploads for months. And that's like, it becomes mentally taxing on you. Like anything else in life. Like you just grind, 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 grind. You're going to grind yourself down to the burnt nose, right? Down to the grindstone. You're going to get burnt out. This is what it is. Fact of the matter. Now, I personally wasn't exactly burned out, but, you know, God, the universe, whatever, had other plans for me to enter into a chill out stage, a burnt out stage, very forcefully, but is what it was. So, I'm uploading like crazy. In tandem with that, my old childhood, like, best best friend, like, literally i'm um, talking like grade one till forever type shit that's like the relationship we have one of those friends where as much time passes that you don't see each other you see each other again it's like there's nothing you could tell me that would surprise me there's no like there's no just there's just it is what it is like there's no judgment like we just accept each other wholly and fully for who we are and um, 
he has his own business. He's an independent contractor. He's a, uh, a, a, a carpenter by trade and a finisher. So he does interior and exterior, interior and exterior work, um, mainly carpentry and then like um, base boards and just that type of work. So we were doing at this point, because the season was coming to a close, we were doing decks. Um, his truck had an issue, broke down. I have a truck. He's like, I have these jobs I need to finish. And I'm like, well, yeah, I could use, I could use some extra cash. Right. Um, I'm pretty apt or adept with that type of work too. I've worked with tools in the past growing up. My dad is the way he is. I've grown up using type, those type of tools. I understand the work. I'm not a professional. It's not my trade, but I know how to take direction. And I know that like, uh, you know, attention to detail and, and yeah, basic math and, and, and using these tools and things like that. So this is late October. Him and I are grinding these jobs, but they're weather dependent, right? Because some days if it's raining out, can't be building decks in the rain, can't be installing plates of glass and rails and, and cutting, um, Wood, uh, well, composite wood being synthetic wood derived from synthetic materials that looks like wood, but it's not actually wood. But we were doing enclosures on decks and uh, interior work, so like puttying and, and, and finishing finishing holes and, and um, sanding shit and just whatever. We, it, just, it was a whole thing, right? Working with him. So I got that going, plus trying to grind YouTube. And like everything else in life juggling as well and then um we're trying to close out these jobs for the end of season two guys we're working with at two locations pretty close to each other wealthy guys who we both know from the past from like i used to play uh rep soccer with one of the dudes the other dude is a couple years older both wealthy guys one's a doctor one's basically a business man real estate kind of guy wealthy guys Good fun times. Um, at the one dude's house though, uh, and this was Halloween day. We pull out a piece of um, countertop to the garage because we have to cut it to fit to size, right? To install it. While we're pulling out to the, to the garage, I get the bitch way of walking, so I'm walking backwards, right? When you're carrying something, somebody gets the bitch way. Somebody has to go blind, right? So I'm carrying blind. I trip over a pallet, a wooden pallet, fall backwards. I'm in like a puffy vest and a sweater and stuff. I smoke the back of my ribs, my rib cage, on the corner of this pallet. At the time, it kind of hurt didn't really register though, right? Just kept on with our day's work. And uh, at the end of the day, buddy who we're working for goes, do you guys want to come to my Halloween party tonight? And we got done, we worked past dark we set up lights to get his job like all as, as deep finish as we could because we knew weather was coming finish the job we go yeah we'll be back in a couple hours he lives a bit out in the country rush to town we go to spirit halloween to pick up uh costumes right so we spend like our day's pay on just costumes for for the night <laughs> Rip back to my house. My buddy showers at my place. We shower up. Da, da, da. We drive back out there. Um, 
continue to basically indulge in a Halloween party. Now, <laughs> here's where things get a little interesting for me is like, lately, like, my eyes have been open to the world for a long time, but he continues to celebrate in a pagan holiday. He knows better, but he does it anyways because of society and all that shit, right? The night turns incredibly sour, not on my behalf, but my buddy gets a little out of control. There's tensions and things. They have a ride service. Buddy who owns the house pays for the ride service for, he's just like, people come, they it's, they drive your, your vehicle home with you in it, and buddy, his buddy uh, follows behind they drop you off at home, safe, and then uh, uh, Buddy gets back in his cohort's, cohort's car, and they go do other jobs, and they make money on there as a ride service. So we do that, get back to my house. He's in bad shape. We go to bed. Him and I, two grown men sharing my queen size bed we're going butt to butt right back to back butt to butt fully clothed go to sleep we go butt to butt wake up the next day and he is in a world of hurt but not like the 40 ounce hurt like a different type of hurt like really actually truly sick i don't feel that bad i'm like all right whatever He's dying in my bed all day. I take care of him, bring him water, hydrate, get him some meds and stuff. Da 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 da. He's in such a world of pain that he stays a whole other night. We order food, he, we watch movies, but really he's just kind of sleeping and sweating the whole time. Not just a hangover. So, so the next day I wake up, he's like, I got to get out of here. I got to get home. Finds his way home via like a ride service. Now I'm feeling like deathly ill and sick. So this is like October or no, like the start of November, right? Halloween, so like November 2nd, right? I wake up, I'm feeling like death in a handbag. And he messages me from home being like, I took a, a, a COVID test, I'm positive, you should take one. So I reach into my like side table, I have tests. I take a test, I'm positive. In that same very moment, I realize that's when my laptop completely went screwy. So I'm like, oh, great. COVID positive, laptop dead, done, dust. Also, now I'm starting to feel the pain come in from my ribs. So I look in the, I can barely like maneuver my body, right? I can feel in the back my rib shifting around right? It's so painful, so painful. I go to the mirror and I can see bruising, but it's not exterior, like a little bit of exterior bruising, but really what it was is deep internal hematoma, like tissue hematoma internally, right? So pardon me, a little Dr. P. So your man has a broken rib. Now he's feverish, sweating, all that buddy says he's COVID positive. I test, I'm COVID positive. I've avoided this shit for three years, right? And I was an anti-vaxxer. Really, I was pro-choice. I was just like, get it or don't. I don't care. We all, like, just, I don't care if you get it or not. I just chose not to. So I'm anti-V, not that I'm anti, but I didn't get V'd. And uh, here's where I'll break down my COVID experience then with broken ribs, right? So that's what, that was the multiplier 
of what made it shittier, but really the ribs were the worst thing. The, the cold itself, and it really was just a cold, I've had way worse in the past of just general, general cold and flu. Because when I was a kid, I used to get bronchial as shit, right? Which I was worried about because I haven't been bronchial in years. But that's back in my weed smoking days when I used to fucking Cheech and Chong Puff Puff Pass all the time. So I used to hack up crazy bronchial shit, brown stuff, like solidified brown mucus, infections, you know, out the, out the A and like just taking expectorant and this expectoranting mucus out. But anyways, so day, the first two days of my, of my thing was fever, just fever and sweat, fever pitch with the broken ass ribs. So, so hard to get out of bed, no positions comfortable. I knew if I go to the ER, A, I'm COVID positive, so that's stupid to go there and expose people. Thirdly, you can't do shit for broken ribs other than just allow them to heal. So I knew that. So boom. So first two days is fever sweats. Shitty, not too bad, but also shitty. The next day, fever sweats go away, it moves into my chest. So I go bronchial. I'm sitting there stressing, being like, how bronchial is one gonna get, right? I'm not trying to be on a ventilator and shit. And I know that I'm susceptible because I have a little bit of asthma, I have a puffer. Puffer saved me a bunch of times. So for, I would say 24 to 36 hours, I got mucousy with the, that little, that deep bronchial pain. And then there's like the, it builds and you have to cough it out. And like, I had like a spittoon on the side of my bed, just mucusing into a bottle. Um, and there's that wheeze and that tickle, but that pain. And I was just praying. I was like, please don't let this be worse. Cause every time I would <coughs> cough on the side of my ribs, it felt like the guy from Assassin's Creed who had the, 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 the sheath knife on his hand plus a fist. And every time I would have the slightest cough, it would be like getting stabbed and punched by the Assassin's Creed guy in my ribs on the side, right? So boom, that's happening. In the next days to follow, pain, pain, pain. The bronchial doesn't get too bad, but I'm popping Advil's like a MF or so ibuprofen out the yin. Acetaminophen, better to pop, but doesn't really affect me because for me, my body likes ibuprof, it likes liquid gels, it likes extra strength, it likes 800 milligesies to make sure pain is a thing. I'm also rubbing icy hot all over my fucking back. I'm trying to do whatever I can to mitigate this pain, right? So I'm in a dark dungeon of death, right? With these different pains, trying to mitigate, trying to um, dodge this pain, right? So the next thing happens is <clears throat> I start having these crazy bouts of like 10 diarrheas in a row. And now in the diarrheas are black flecks of like dirty, like blood diarrhea. But that means it's old dry diarrhea, diarrhea meaning that you probably had like an ulcer bleed from the ibuprofen, the ibuprofen can do that to you. But also, I also have like this, this, this shifting rib in the back and broken ribs. So I'm like, oh, do I have internal bleeding? That would be fucking great, wouldn't it? So now I'm stressing about that. I call my sister who's a nurse. We have some chats. She goes, yeah, it's probably just you were popping too much ibuprofen. She's like, stay off the ibuprofen, switch to acetaminophen, switch to T1, switch to Tylenol 1s, which is acetaminophen. If it doesn't clear back to normal by like the next 48 hours, then you might have to go to the hospital. And I was like, okay, fair enough. So that rides out. My stools go back to normal. Yes. Okay. So that's a win. Next shifts from bronchial to my sinus. So it goes into sinus, sinus, not too bad. I have some like snottiness. Da -da 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 -da. And then after that couple days of snottiness in the sinus, 
it goes to my ears. So my equilibrium and my ears start getting attacked. I got crackling and popping in both drums. I don't know what's up. My equilibrium's off. And during this whole time, I got malaise as shit. Now, malaise being that you just got no energy. It's like I could have a shower and that's about it. Like I could have a shower and make myself toast in a bowl of soup <laughs> and I'm done for the day. Like, So at this point, I'm probably like a week, a week and a half deep with all these symptoms fluctuating, each in their own compartment. Like they weren't all at once. Now, not, not one time did they ever completely overtake me or destroy me. I didn't feel, it's like I was definitely sick, but I wasn't deathbed type sick. And really the ribs were the worst thing but it was just the way that the symptoms kept popping up in compartmentalized ways. So I'm just like, what is this? I don't understand the sickness at all. By the two week mark, I had literally just been isolating because I don't want to go in the world. I don't want to jeopardize people's health. Right? So I isolated for over 10 days, but I was running out of supplies and I thought, ta and at this point, it was just dark dungeon, depressed, malaise, trying to recover. And then at the same time, knowing like my laptop's broken, I don't know how much more I got in the tank for YouTube, imposter syndrome, like just some deep, shitty, dark thoughts, but that's for the next part of this video. Um, so at this point, I finally go out into the world. I get fresh water. I got some more like hauls, some, 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 some soup some bread, whatever, so just a, a quick mish, Shopper's Drug Mart. By the end of that mish, I'm sweating <laughs> and I'm back for another week. I'm in fevers again. So basically my COVID lasted about three weeks. So that would take me into like November 21st. And during the end of my COVID, I'm like, I need to make some money here. I need to get another side hussy. Um, the work with my buddy dried up cause it's seasonal, right? Because we can't, there's not a lot of interior. We were doing exterior. Um, we finished that, those things up to, to the completion that we could. And I'm like, okay, snow blowing. Cause it's about to be 30 days of night here where I live and it's fucking 30 days. And I, and here I'll put up right here, actually, while we're just, while we're on the subject, I will put up and we're not even fully, fully through the season. It's, it's early January. We have more snow to come. I'll put up this video right here. You can see what it's like. When you live where there's so much snow that you may not know what the parking situation dictates because the sign's gone. Because the banks are 12 feet high. Maybe 10. Almost 10, almost 12. Okay. It's that Josh Hartman movie, 30 Days a Night, except for... Here, it's like four months of that. But in this video, you'll see that this street sign, which is about 12 feet in height, is buried by the snowbank that we have. So, I get off the COVID and I'm like, I gotta start the snow blowing side hustle because snow's about to fall. It could be good money. My dad, who's worked his entire fucking life off at a mill, as an electrician at the mill for 35 years, um, he finally gets to have the fruits of his labor. And so he goes away for five months in the winter. He snowbirds, right? He's earned that shit. So he's a blue, been a blue collar guy his whole life. He, 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 he goes off to, uh, to the States to Arizona more specifically, and gets to have his partial retirement because he still works part-time even though he's 66. Anyways, what I'm saying is he has a snowblower that he's used his whole life basically, right? Living here in this Arctic tundra that I live in. And I go, well, since you're going away and you don't have to ever use a snowblower anymore, can I borrow it for the winter and use it as a tool to make some cashish on the side to go service many old women's driveways because that's mostly my clientele. Although I do have a few dudes who run properties 
who are like uh, they don't they own the property, but they don't they they don't live in the property. They are landlords. Is the word I'm looking for, and they get me to go and service the property because that's part of their landlordship relative to the tenancy. So I have those guys, but then I have mostly like great older women that I generally service their driveways and their back walks and their pathways and all that. And so I have a bunch of them They're It's hilarious. It's, it's like actually really fun to go out and, and, and socialize and, and talk with them. It's like grandma motherly vibes and they all love me and my fur hat and, <laughs> we have a good old time, but once again, that's seasonal work, it's piece work, it's weather dependent, it's not consistent. Now, the winter truly hits here, right? Early December, just coming out of COVID, doing my little snow blowing, dang, dang. Guilt and shame knowing I got to get back to YouTube, not knowing how much I have left in the tank for YouTube. And then also, once again, seasonal depression kicks in. So in Canada where I live from 4.30 p.m. until 9.30 a.m., it is dark, okay? So your brain doesn't know the difference. At five o'clock dinner time, in my, bra in my brain, my, my circadian biorhythm brain, it's like, oh, hey, by the way, it's midnight, but it's 5 p.m. So instantly tired, instantly malaise, instantly depressed, because there's only seven hours of daylight and those daylight hours are generally cloudy, overcast, snowing, blustery, blistering winds, minus 25, 30, right? So it comes and goes. So now I'm just in, I, I, I'm just in hibernation mode because literally for like my childhood, I lived here and it didn't affect me as much then, but now I'm an adult. I lived away in Southern Ontario for... 10 years winter down in Toronto is not the same as here and I'm not used to it yet I've only been back here for like two and a half three years now I don't know how to deal with this these people are different breeds right so I'm just trying to get back to that but the the the, the sad the seasonal the seasonal depression just kicks right in so boom seasonal depression <laughs> YouTube depression broken laptop depression although many people helping me very quickly so once again, shout out to y'all. But now I go into a deep, dark spiral. Now, here's the two things that happen in this deep, dark spiral. First, I think the universe, God, whoever just put me on fucking timeout. They're like, it was like, you've been grinding on this thing. The laptop's broken. The people are here for you regardless, but just chill out for a bit. Take some time. Have some introspective introspection, maybe reflect. Da, da 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 da. Beyond that, I got like in that introspection and reflection, I got the devil in my ear, and I don't mean the devil or hearing voices or anything. Just that that negative self talk in my ear, being like, uh, like <laughs> you ain't shit. You'll never be shit. These dreams and desires that you've had your whole life, they don't matter. Like, you don't matter. You're an absolute fucking zero. <laughs> well, it gets dark. You, like, you'll never be nothing. Everything that you're chasing is is futile, frivolous, and pointless. Just go do some shit that you hate for the rest of your life. Don't continue to try to be on your paths that actually give you, like, purpose and, and, and like, goosebumps and, and, and allow you to, 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 like, feel alive. Just like, nah, fuck you, fuck that. You, like, you ain't shit. You, and <laughs> hey, you might even be better off dead, motherfucker. So I got that shit just in my head, just constantly being like, well, it is proof positive because I've been at all of these things, even before YouTube, all of the other things I've tried in my life. And it's just like always finding myself in a similar position and boat, which then I have to introspect and go, okay, well, through, <laughs> through, um, uh, uh, empirical data, right? I can self deduce through a reductionist method through data to get to pinpoint origin of like, why is it, why, why is it this way? And why are things the way that they are? And then 
as much as I want to to deduce and reduce and, and try to find the reasons, I also go that like life just unfolds. Like I I can't explain rhyme or reason half the time of why things unfold. Like is this a scripted reality? Am I what am I am I destined for anything? Am I destined for nothing? Like it's all gonna just unfold and work out the way it's going to regardless, anyways. So, and it's like at a certain point you need to just kind of surrender and relinquish some sort of control because you know I try to have so much control all the time, but really if I think back to my life, like how did I ever get through all the shit that I've ever got through? I don't know. Like, and I certainly didn't control all of it. It just unfolds. And happens the way it's going to happen. So a lesson in surrender while I'm sitting here depressed in my bed, um, trying to figure out ways to, 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 to get on with it and move forward and, um, and, uh, you know, make sense of some things, but also make plans and, and, uh, you know, keep the momentum alive and keep pumping my own tires. Like, you know, you guys have, have, have pumped the air in my tires for years as well, but like, really at the end of the day, when you wake up in the morning and, and, and this is for anybody else in life pursuing what you're pursuing, like, you know, you wake up and, you, and you, 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 you have to pump your own tires, right? You have to keep pumping your tires and be like optimistic and it's going to work and I'm going to get there and da, da, da. And like, it's good, like, you know, just keep. And I've been pumping my tires on a personal journey through my creations for, I don't know, let's let's say just just this in general not anything before youtube i've been pumping my own tires with optimism for like a good six years at this point five for sure going through the struggles and the hard times and the barriers and then this and then that's and then you know it just you and then yeah you see the folks around you and they're just like leveling up and you're just like oh like i'm not I'm not, I'm not even close to that. Like I'm not getting, I'm not getting levels really. So it's like, you start to really dwell on that and like the levels and shit. So anyway, so I'm, you know, it, it, it's a dark December basically, but I'm doing my snow blowing shit and I'm out of chips right now. And I don't want to reach in the crunchy bag and this has congealed. And I knew that it would get to the point where I would just be talking. So please bear with me. But um, so deep, dark depression, a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of you ain't shits in my head, a lot of stuff like that. Then battling the dark place, just like, no, you're going to like, you're going to come out and there, there's, there, there's next things to learn here. There's, there's a level up in, in this, in this drought. Like there is a level up in this drought. So also once again, shame and guilt, like people concerned for me, messaging me in the inbox, which by the way, love you guys. Thank you so much for that. Like, are you okay? Like, I'm concerned for you. Like, are you going to be good? I am going to be good. I'm the type of person who, when I really get in the shits, I need to be left alone. It really, to be honest with you, I have to process things alone. The more people try to like reach in, the worse it gets for me because yes, there's some understanding there, but I don't want to be the person unloading my shit to other people really. And I need, there's just something about processing alone that to me is so necessary and therapeutic because only I can process the garbage that's going through me in my life and, uh, and, and try to find, to try to refine and sift out the gold, right? Like I have to sift out the gold and the silver out of the mud, right? personally by myself because nobody else is going to do it for me so i'm sitting out i'm sitting here through early mid-december sifting through the gold in the mud also beyond that another thing was i started kind of fasting again and i was getting kind of ch like more chunky than i wanted to be at a point because i was uploading so much and i was able to lose a shirt size and a pant size in my time off which i don't know if you can tell my face probably my face isn't it's not looking the greatest or maybe a little bit bloaty. I don't know. But really the truth is I lost a pant size and a shirt size with doing the snow blowing and that and, and just not eating crazy. My, I think my body was even at a point where it was like, you need to step back on, on the, the big dirty meals. Cause that's what this channel is. It's like, it's a big dirty meal of not the greatest food most days. Right? So I think my body kind of put me in check in that sense. So I kind of was, I was feeling light. I was feeling nice. And then I fell into a bit of complacency of just like, oh, this feels good to actually be taking a break right now. Once I got 
out of the sickness and everything, I was like, oh, this feels kind of good to just be taking a break. But I didn't, I still had the, the shame and the guilt and the weight of like, you guys potentially missing me or being concerned for me and, and that weighs on me. But like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to come and, and explain things preemptively because that would mean that like, it would indicate that I'd be back soon, which I just didn't feel like I was there yet. And in the interim of that, I saw Lizzie Lou finally came back after a year off. And she basically just said in a very quick synopsis, like she didn't really elaborate too much, but she said basically mental health. I had to take a mental health break from this platform, from everything. Now, I don't know the depth of what she went through, but that's the truth. I also just felt like that in the moment too. I was like, oh, this is like, a, I just need a mental health break, right? Um, maybe a body break, you know, with Joanne and that other guy, body break. But also I needed a mental health break because uh, there is this, this thing about if you don't create content on the level to like constantly and consistently and you're you know, you're constantly trying to keep up and it eventually just gets to you and you get burnt. And then there's all these ideas in your head. And, and, and once again, it comes back to like the, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. I don't deserve success. I don't deserve happiness. I don't deserve, uh, just, there's just so many things. I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's just so much that comes along with it because there's all this 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 validation and these things attached to your works that you're constantly trying to put out there and people get to consume it so quickly right they just get to click in scroll around they get to judge you and then they get to fuck off and then they get to go watch the next video and it's just like everybody's just crackheads just watching content but for the person who creates it it's like a whole fucking production and it takes so much energy and thought and care and all these things and you you continually keep giving that and giving that and giving that and giving that. And when the ROI, the return on investment energetically isn't equitable, like it doesn't match, then you go, holy fuck. And you just get so drugged down by that, by that energy. Like you just get, you get consumed and defeated because you are being consumed by people who watch you. And it's just a fucked up thing. And you get into a crazy headspace and that's kind of where I got. But anyways, so boom, so I'm doing that and I get into the deep darks and then it's winter and seasonal depression and I needed a break and then I got complacent, I got comfy and then I got scared to come back because I didn't want to come back too before I was ready to come back because if I came back before I was ready to come back, I would be like, I would feel that I'm in an obligated position to now be like uploading, uploading, uploading and I just wasn't ready for that yet. So, so process, process, and then, and then the holidays came around. So just, you know, the holidays are just overwhelming. Like just, it's just, it's family shit. It's this shit, but then people are sick and like, this isn't going to work out and da, 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 da. And you're just juggling all these things and then new years. And it's just, it's just, it's just, it, December is a very overwhelming bombardment of shit. And it's definitely near the end of the year. Cause it's like, it's like Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then uh, Christmas and New Year, like it's all just packed in. And so in my head, I was just like, honestly, I'm just going to ride the shit until all of that is passed. Because I don't have the bandwidth right now, especially with being sick and just everything that I experienced in these last two months. I was like, I do not have the bandwidth. Um, Chronologically speaking, I missed the part about the laptop and thinking about getting my screen fixed. T to quickly summarize, I reached out to a, a local uh, like P like a, a computer place, and he basically was like, "It's cheaper to get the screen fixed, but at the same time, it's going to be four to six weeks at the very minimum because I have to order the parts. They come in in four to six weeks." And then you bring it in and you get the screen changed out. And I was like, well, that's kind of fucking stupid. So I might as well just keep taking a break. Save up, like I put away the thousand, right? And then make the next bit of the next thousand and just get the, just get a laptop eventually, right? And just take this break. So that's not, I, I, I screwed up the chronology on that. But just to say that, to say that, and instead of getting it fixed, I just finally got a new, the new laptop. Um, so that pretty much wraps mostly everything. 
into one neat package, I hopefully believe. Very stream of con consciousness. I don't think there's going to be, need to be a lot of edits here. Um, what am I going to wrap this by saying there was something that I needed to, 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 to bow tie this bitch together? And that is... <laughs> Um, what well, uh, was I going to say? I don't know. How was I going to wrap this? Um, basically, yeah, the last two months have been insanity peppers in a sense for me. Um, recalibrating, uh, and, and, and getting ready for whatever, whatever, whatever's next. I'm just, I'm juggling so many thoughts and ideas in my head, uh, about, like, you know, this platform and things. And um, I'm looking into Rumble because uh, I did look into Rumble. I'm actually transferring my Hoodies House catalog over to Rumble right now. It takes like a couple weeks because I have so many videos. But Rumble's pretty sweet because it's like, it's not censored. It's you can just do whatever the shit you want over there. And also, there's no time frame for monetization. You literally upload and you're immediately monetized. So I'm thinking I might start a whole different channel over there because there's no stipulation to monetization and I could just do a whole different channel. Like a, like a, just a, I'm thinking about, about calling it hoodies hot seat where we get into some real depth of shit, like just way different depth of shit without the food and all that more of just like a, an armchair, like a, you know, Dax Shepard, the armchair podcast type thing, just like me sitting down spilling beans on myself, my life, topics, da 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 because I think that would be really therapeutic for me and cool and very fun and enjoyable. And also, like I said, like with YouTube, you have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time before you even get monetized. And that's like, even if you create a second channel, like I'm monetized on this channel, but if I create a brand new channel off of this, I still have to go through that whole same process. And it's not guaranteed that your shit's going to pop on the new thing that you create. So you're putting sweat equity into a channel that might not even get monetized. And even when it does get monetized, it's going to be very menial trickle of, of, of any, any money. But on Rumble, you just start uploading and you immediately start making money. And the system, the layout over there is so goddamn simple. They simplified it so much. And I was like, this is how it needs to be. Rumble like knows what's up. So anyways, and then on top of that, I just been tripping about like, and this is going to be some offside shit, but, and you could believe it or not if you want, it doesn't matter. But like, <laughs> aside from the sex trafficking with Andrew Tate and all that, let, let, let's not take in his current account uh, of where he's at in life. We don't know the truth yet. It's all it's all alleged and there has been no trial or whatever and, and that's whatever. But the shit that he's been talking about for years, like about like the matrix and being slave minded and da, 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 and all the things like that and seeing through the bullshit of this world, you know, not to toot my own shit, but like I've been on that. I've been based for years. You know, I've been speaking like that for years. Now he got global fame and all that from it. I got called a kook essentially, right? But the fact of the matter is <laughs> I mostly speak on that type of stuff in my live streams. Anybody who's been on some of my based ass live streams knows what's up. <coughs> I don't publish my live streams because I never wanted my channel to become a mixed bag of contrived tricks. Like I didn't want it to be like professional food video. Then guy talks crazy for three hours on live stream about the world. And then next food video, like I wanted to keep it branded and in a, in a very specific thing. But fact of the matter is when I do those lives, they still get processed by YouTube, by the algorithm, by the bots, by the AI, and by the real human beings behind the scenes who monitor YouTube shit too. And they filter out and they see what you talk about. And it's like, if they don't, if it doesn't line up with the agenda, the censorship, the narrative that's trying to be pushed through these platforms, because it's a true thing at this point, then your channel gets a little shadow bazans. You know what I mean? So my shit's been like that forever uh, because I've spoken on these things that are for years though, like years back, I've been on that based reality. And, uh, 
I know that's partially why my channel is the way that it is. is like I've just, I, I, I spoke a little too much hot ass truth, right? And the, uh, and the, 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 the YouTube agenda doesn't like that. They're, they're not for it. Especially now, like, it, because if you're not a creator, you don't know that when I upload, there's like seven boxes that I have to check that if my, it's all censorship shit of like, if I violate anything in these in the video instant demonetization and your channel could get like a strike from it and it's three strikes you're out so us as creators we have to literally uh cater to and pander to a certain level of censorship for us to even upload and that's how they keep people in their in their tight little box of what they of what youtube wants from the creator rather than what the creator wants to do and that's what rumbles up to now they're just like it's like old youtube it's wild wild west it's just like you just be exactly who and what the fuck you are and you immediately start making money if you get views so i might do a little rumble youtube juggle here in the future and uh yeah i think that wraps that. Um, as far as me getting back super active on the platform, obviously I, I clearly want to, but I'm also in a position right now where I'm going to still have to go rip my side hussies. I'm looking into certain, uh, like a, like a, a driving type career maybe on this to be more full time ish, uh, like AZ DZ. ACD, AZDZ type shit, just a license, a type of license. But I think that'd be something that, you know, you get paid pretty good money and you have all the benefits and blah, 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 blah. And then also it's just like, I, I'm so the type of person at this point in my life where I just want to be alone and like I'll report on a radio and like fill out sheets and do that shit. But I, I just, I'm not about being sat or stationed in a workplace about, around a ton of people, annoying personalities. Um, people like yelling at you, bitching at you, managerial bosses, like, nah, 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 it ain't for me. That's why I'm entrepreneurial in my nature. Hence snow blowing business, hence this channel, <laughs> hence, uh, trying to monetize, you know, music and the subscriber sponsored requests and ways to create entrepreneurial income streams for self, to be self-sufficient, to be the guy who runs his own reality, his own shit. Um, even working for my buddy, like still, that was you know, he's a freelance contractor and I'm just like him hanging out with his buddy. Like it was, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like I'm, I'm kowtowing to some person who's not any more intelligent than me. They just know how to, how to, how to box their personality and follow directions. And I'm not good at that. I, I've always been a nonconformist. I've always been radical rebel, uh, anti-authoritarian. I don't like people telling me what to do. Because, you know, I, I, I know how to, how to conduct my own self in life. Like, you know, I, I just, I, I'm, it ain't for me. That shit's for the birds. You know, I, I, I spent, <laughs> uh, what, almost 20 years under authoritarian rule telling me to sit down, shut up do this, do that, homework, when I can piss, when I can shit, when I can have a drink of water, who I can talk to, how I can talk, if I can be loud, if I can't be loud. Like, I just, I've, I've had enough of that. I don't need my reality to be dictated by other people. You know, if I can mitigate that as much as possible, then that's living. That's real living. That's like true, t like freedom type shit. I was not put on this planet to be bitched around and told what to do for the rest of my entire life. Fuck all that. Big time, fuck all that. So, um, yeah, that's, I guess, me and in my uh, radical rebel spirit uh, trying to be the creator, the person who, who creates. Who, uh, but also doesn't does go do good works. Like when I go do snow blowing, the people who hired me, they're my boss. But it's different. It's like we're just friends. Like I go to the door and I'm just like, like I got Janet, I got I got Georgina, 
I got um, uh, Conchetta, and I got Jack. He's one of the property guys. Um, you know, I got so many of these people. Uh, uh, Carolyn, she's great. I got multiple Judys, two Judys, um, but one has a husband named Cam, and then the other one is Robert. So, you know, but when I go there, it's like, I'm just like hanging out. They're happy to see me, and then I just do my own thing. They give me money. I wish them well. Happy New Year, Christmas, da-da-da. We have chats, and it's good. It's just like good energy. Like, I bring the good energy. I do the good works. I do the good job because that's what I like. I like clean professionalism, nice, nice clean lines. Like, I do the good job. They're happy. They pay me. I kind of dictate the, the rules, though, in terms of the service and the pay. Like, that's more my shit. Right. I'm not trying to get yelled at by some fucking idiot who's just like, you just. <laughs> so anyways, maybe I'm going way off tangent here, but I'm just saying to those of you who want to like try to like create your own way of living in life and make your own money. It's possible. You can do it. You figure it out. You just have to put your mind to it. And that's what I'm trying to do once more again. I fell into maybe a defeatist moment in my life, but I'm trying to get back on my feet is and make shit happen again. So shout out to all of you once again who came through and helped me. Uh, yeah, you'll never know how much it means to me. I, I have my cries, have my little waterworks because I just felt like, wow, that's just so amazing. It happened so fast. Um, if I was going <laughs> to go on, take the money and run, I definitely would have done like a hoodie needs to go to rehab. I need 30 grand and then just disappeared, which I would never do. <laughs> but I'm going to say like, I'm sure there's people out there who are like, oh, he got a thousand bucks and then just left forever. <laughs> it's like, look, if I was going to pull a true scam, like a, like a scam, like a for real scam, I would go for you know, 30 G's for like, I need to go to rehab and then just like get it and dip forever to the Philippines or some shit. You know what I mean? Just me out in Bali, Thailand, just pretending in the, <laughs> to go to rehab. But you know what I mean? It just, my life kind of, life sat me down and told me what was up for a bit. And now I think I'm on the other side of it. I think I'm just, I'm finally coming out, putting shit back together. Um, and, you know, we're just reevaluating, uh, recalibrating, reevaluating, assessing, finding new ways to move forward and getting my headspace back to Optimus Prime to where, like, I can see a future for myself uh, rather than being deep down, dark in the dumps. So I'll end that here. Like I said, long ass video. And uh, I will finish the rest of this later on tonight. Probably I'll have to reheat that and bring back these, uh, these chippies. But ultimately, I just needed a video where I could talk and tell everything. So I think it was pretty flow state. Minimal cuts, two guns. I was born and bred for this shit just for talking out my ass. Okay. <laughs> um... So till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true. And thank you all so much, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. Everybody, once again, in the GoFundMe, but also the people who checked on me. The people who hit my inbox, who uh, hit my, well, my DMs on Insta, but then also my inbox email-wise. Uh, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. And... Uh, See you in the next one. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.